Friends, it is indeed a blessing and a delight to be gathered with you once again for worship. It is Mother's Day. Uh, we say this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We are thankful for all mothers, those here at Epworth this morning, those in our communities and around the world. We are truly grateful to God for the gift of mothers and the gift of families. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you once again for the time that we have. We know, dear God, that you have made it possible for your children to gather once again to hear your word, once again to worship you. We do not take it lightly. Our hearts overflow with gratitude today on this Mother's Day. Dear God, we ask that you open our hearts, orchestrate the receptivity of our hearts today so that we would hear what you have prepared for us. In Jesus' name, amen. People of God, the scripture passage read this morning from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, puts forward for our edification this powerful and timeless appeal that as Christians we should offer ourselves to God or give ourselves in God's service as a living sacrifice. To many of us, the scripture passage for this morning is a very familiar one. Some of us may remember the joy of reading and committing passages of scripture to memory. We went Sunday school early in those years in children's ministry and the youth ministry. I remember those days as though it were yesterday. This was one of the passages I memorized. I loved, I beseech you therefore. We used to read the King James Version in those days. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Back then, the freshness of these teachings in Holy Writ reached deep in my heart, and I would imagine yours as well. They, they invigorated, invigorated my soul and engaged my mind. But time passes and we get used to hearing the scriptures and they do not seem as fresh as they used to during those early days. We start missing things. While I was preparing uh, today's message, it, it occurred to me that passages of Scripture do not really lose their freshness. Rather, it is us who do not hear the Scriptures with fresh ears or read with fresh eyes, spiritually speaking, as we used to. In the passage before us this morning, one of the words we start to miss is, is one of those central words. It is central, a central word, sacrifice. It is, not, it is not that we do not hear the word. We hear it. We talk about it. We just do not hear it with the same freshness that we used to. When we hear the word sacrifice as we should, we hear God we hear that God is calling us to something challenging. But at the same time, it gives us the opportunity to show God that our choice, our choice is to be true worshipers of God. The sacrifice that God is asking of us is a living sacrifice, not a dead one. In the Old Testament, on altars, sacrifices of animals were made as sin offerings, guilt offerings, burnt offerings. But in this dispensation of grace through Jesus Christ, the perfect sacrifice and risen Savior, God is asking us to offer ourselves as, living, as a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice, as I said, among other things, is, is different than a dead one. In a manner of speaking, 
a living sacrifice can choose to get off the altar, but a dead one cannot. Living sacrifice means that day in and day out, moment by moment, we, we offer to God all that we have and all that we are. Thus, I am using as a subject from which to preach in the time that I have. Words from the text, a living sacrifice, a living sacrifice. So this is how it works. God calls us to offer ourselves. God does not force us. Then we prayerfully choose to trust God's guidance. That's how it works. We're, we're not under law, but under grace. That is why Paul speaks as he does in the text. He says, I urge you, I beseech you, I implore you. Some translations say, I appeal to you. Also, this is the heart of a pastor. Paul, with a pastor's heart, speaking to the Roman, to the Roman church. Wanting to see God's children loving him and giving their lives to him. Then this appeal figuratively draws us to the center of our worship. Because when you look at the text and you look at it closely, it is about worship. Draws us to the center of our worship. Not just worship on Sunday morning, but how we live every single day of the week. Will you choose to offer yourself as a living sacrifice? Understand, if you please, this question is renewed for God each day in our lives and in each new season. Will you choose to offer yourself as a living sacrifice? That's God's question to us on the Sunday morning. In this season in the life of the church. To put this another way, will you stay on the altar to be who God wants you to be and to serve in the way that God is asking you to serve? To offer ourselves as a living sacrifice to God in view of the mercies of God, that is in light of the love that he has shown to us, we must do three things. Surrender ourselves to God, serve sacrificially, and seek transformation. When we do not surrender ourselves to God, we easily give in to fear, doubt, and worry about what's not possible, what we cannot do. Those three take hold of us when we are not surrendered to God. Also, when we're not surrendered to God, pride and conceit enter the picture. When pride is in the picture, what we think or believe about something must, we say to ourselves, must be right because we are the ones thinking it. That's the premise. Sisters and brothers in Christ and creation, is it not amazing that every silo in the world today believes that they have a monopoly of the truth. Jesus knew that we ourselves can get in the way of us offering ourselves to God and following in Jesus' example. So in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, Jesus said in substance, you will not make it as my disciple without having a response to yourself. The response is to deny yourself. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, Jesus said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, follow me. He has critical insight. John Lipka said to deny oneself is not to do without some things or many things. It is really to replace 
the self with God in Christ as the object of affections. To deny oneself is to place the divine will of God before self-will. In other words, to surrender ourselves to Jesus Christ is to choose to listen, choose to trust, and follow God's direction. Even when we are tempted to listen to ourselves and our own self-will. But God is not like humankind. He does not produce evidence of the countless blessings that he has bestowed upon us, even things we have never prayed for. Human beings do that. We do that. We're quick to show, remember how many things I did for you. But God does not do that. Instead, he continues to watch over us continues to draw us by grace to believe and strengthen our faith. But often our own human and conditioned responses, our conditioned minds and responses will try to get the better of us. But God is saying, follow my divine grace. Come and follow me. Follow my divine grace and guidance in every decision you make. And every situation, I will not let you down. When the reality of our fallibility as human beings settles in, it is grace and grace alone that pushes us to the place of saying, I am going to trust that you are truly God, that you are the omniscient God, you are all-knowing the omnipotent God, you are all powerful and the omnipresent God, you are always present. That is when we say, I'm going to trust what I cannot know, you know. What I cannot see, you can. What I cannot do, you can. The next thing in offering ourselves as a living sacrifice to God is to serve sacrificially. Jesus reminds us in Mark's gospel, chapter 10 and verse 45, for even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Here's the point. When we serve and we make sacrifices, when we go the extra mile, when we go beyond ourselves, when we go beyond even what our mind is telling us is not possible. We, we, we're not only doing what Jesus taught, but here's the thing, a simple but powerful truth. We are doing what Jesus did. Today is Mother's Day. Sisters and brothers, I would be remiss not to share with you a mother's sacrifice. Yvette uh, Pegues, Yvette Pegues, a mother of two boys, tells her powerful and life-changing story of sacrificial living. In an article in the Huffington Post, after being a super mom for years, taking care of her family and working, she suffered a traumatic brain injury and radically changed, which radically changed her life. She became wheelchair bound, but did not stop doing what she could. Continued to do what she could to help her husband and the caregivers to care for her family. She did, not, she did more way more than what she could. She was willing to go beyond herself, her situation, and her circumstances. Not everyone in a similar situation to Yvette is able to be as engaged in caring for their family as she was. From super mom, Yvette became an engaged patient mom to her children. Members of her church family helped, helped her family as she continued to travel the road of healing and restoration. 
And so this Mother's Day, in the article, she writes, I, was, I, I looked at that article and I could not pass by. I had to read the whole thing. She said at this time, because she continued to push beyond what she was able to do. This Mother's Day, she will be hugging her children a little tighter. The point is that God calls each of us to some form of serving with sacrifice. It may not look anything like Yvette's sacrifice. It may not be uh, easy or comfortable. It may be given oneself as it relates to time, resources, or talents. But Jesus says, in essence, if you did it, and if you do it, you do it not only for me. If you do it, not only are you doing what I taught you, Jesus says, you're doing what I did. Serving sacrificially, giving oneself as a living sacrifice, sisters and brothers, is true worship. Our lives, when offered, become like a sweet-smelling fragrance when we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. It becomes a sweet-smelling fragrance in the nostrils of God. Gathering on Sunday morning for worship is vital and part of true worship, but so is making a sacrifice through your service. It is not always easy, but God says, trust me. I would suggest to you that we cannot surrender our self-will, nor live sacrificially without the third point, seeking transformation. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. God wants us to be transformed. How? By renewing the mind through what I would propose to you in our Wesleyan tradition, in our Wesleyan tradition, and known as the means of grace, prayer, the study of scripture, Participating in the sacraments of baptism, holy communion, fellowship in worship, and serving. Then to be transformed, don't just talk about God's guidance, but embrace God's guidance. And allow the Holy Spirit to work in your heart. A mind that is not seeking transformation cannot live into the fullness of God's call to offer ourselves a living sacrifice. If we want to live into the fullness of God's call to be transformed, we must stay on the path of transformation. God is saying to us this morning, not only does Christ call us to be transformed, but we ourselves ought to seek, pursue transformation. Seeking transformation is not only indicative of our choice, but demonstrative of our love. It shows that we are responding in our daily, mundane walk with God. We are responding to Jesus' love and mercy by which we were saved and redeemed. None of us can claim to be perfectly transformed. We are, we are all a work in progress. Here is the takeaway for this morning. As we surrender ourselves, as we serve sacrificially, and as we are being transformed, a state of becoming, God makes it so that we can offer our physical and spiritual lives as living sacrifices, which is our true worship. We get the benefit of living life to its fullest because we agree with God as to God's priorities and God's purposes. Sisters and brothers in Christ and creation, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 is not about giving up your life. 
Rather, Christ is teaching us to stand beside ourselves and see ourselves as God sees us, as people striving to wholly dedicate ourselves to him. We see our potential through God's eyes. What God sees when he looks at us is way more than what we can see of ourselves. Through God's eyes, we see the possibilities for serving others and the expansion of ministries from God's perspective. Instead of burning incense, offering animals, or even putting our valuable things on the line, our sacrifice is to be a life lived according to God's agenda. Our lives that we give back to God, the things we give, we are given, if we think about it, those things we end up given to God, given to the work in the life of the church, given to those in need in community. These are gifts that we ourselves have received from God. The person that is being transformed asks this question with, with openness of heart, mind and spirit. God, what is it that you are asking of me in this season, I am asking us, sisters and brothers, to ask God, God, in our prayer, what is it that you are asking of us at this time in the life of the church? As the Holy Spirit, that third person of the Godhead, works on our minds, and as we, by faith, become less and less people conformed to the patterns of this world. God positions us to discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Amen.